Want to know how to create an unstoppable team? In this mini course on leadership, Paul Robinson is going to share with you the proven strategies and techniques used by the world's top leaders to build a high performance team. I have given over a dozen keynote speeches on this subject at various annual conferences. I was also drawn to this topic and also curious about what makes some teams so successful. So I studied winning sports teams and high performance sales teams and organizations to discover a few common traits that distinguish them. This resulted in my understanding and the development of a framework for four pillars of teamwork. And I'm confident that once you understand these four pillars, you will be able to lead your team successfully and effectively. There are four pillars to effective teamwork. One, trust. Two, alignment. Three, individual contribution. And four, collaboration. Both trust and alignment determines the health of the organization and individual contribution and collaboration determine the performance of the team. In order to perform well, a team must be healthy, just like any athlete who participates in any competition. When you're healthy, you can perform better. Now, let's delve deeper and learn each of these pillars of high-performance team. Trust. Establishing trust is a key component to building what is now called as a psychological safety in teams. Effective leaders build a climate of trust and facilitate relationships between team members. Trust means you keep your word. Trust means loyalty. Trust means integrity. Trust means discretion. Trust means the capacity to expose one's own vulnerabilities in an atmosphere where the vulnerabilities will be complemented by each other's strength. So when team members trust each other, there is an uncommon bonding and collaboration that takes place. Trust is variable and measurable. Teams can have low trust and high trust. High trust teams are agile. They get things done faster. And it's called the speed of trust. The speed of trust is a wonderful book by Stephen M. R. Covey on the execution discipline. According to the book and his research, good team communication is an outcome of high trust rather than a tactic or a skill. There is no communication barrier in a highly trusted environment because people can speak their mind. Nobody is judged and everyone's opinion is respected. Trust is confidence in others. Trust is confidence in others' stability and mistrust is suspicion. When trust goes down, speed goes down. Have you ever had an experience of working with someone and you don't trust them? How fast do you think can get things done with this person? I bet you can't even communicate with them effectively, let alone getting things done with them. That is because mistrust leads to delay. It is difficult to execute anything faster when trust is low among teams. Trust is not only about whom you trust, but also who trusts you. Trustworthiness means how dependable you are. When every member is dependable, the trust score increases for the team. Higher the trust score, the better the outcome for the team, and faster the execution. The leaders build trustworthy teams. Here, trust goes in three ways. The leader trusts everyone, and everyone trusts the leader, and everyone else trusts each other. For this, the, the first criteria is that the leader must be worthy of everyone's trust. There are four important criteria on which a leader is trusted by his followers. That is the integrity, transparency, competency, and intention. Integrity means the character of the leader who walks the talk. Transparency is the ability of a leader to expose one's own vulnerability and weaknesses along with their strength. Competence means that a leader promises and delivers something that exceeds everyone's expectation. Intention of the leader means whose interest is he or she is guarding? Whose interests are they bearing in their mind? 
The intention of the leader must be to help others and to serve others to succeed. Serving oneself is not the right intention for leadership, and such leaders are never trusted. Now, these elements contribute to trust for a leader, and many people are of the opinion that it takes time to build trust. However, if you are willing to expose your vulnerabilities, you can gain instant trust from anyone. Most people conceal their flaws, and team members pretend to be knowledgeable in order to appear competent. This is detrimental to the development of trust. People in a trusted environment act transparently and have the courage to speak openly about their vulnerabilities and weaknesses because they believe collectively that their weaknesses are balanced and complemented by the strength of others on the team. Trust is defined as the willingness to accept vulnerability in exchange for positive expectations about the behavior of another. In teamwork, I repeat, man, trust is defined as the willingness to accept vulnerability in exchange for the positive expectations about the behavior of another. According to Causes and Personal, in their book, The Leadership Challenge, building trust is a process that begins when one party is willing to risk being the first to open up, being the first to show vulnerability, and being the first to let go of control. Trusted environment has the psychological safety that everyone can rely upon. Mistakes are taken as a learning experience. There is mutual accountability, a deep sense of commitment, and a failure sheet are encouraged, and initiatives are applauded. Teams that trust each other stands for each other. There's a free flow of information, and everyone can be reached at any point. There is a strong interdependence that acts as a support system for more. And this is why trust is a strong pillar of great teams. The second pillar is alignment. Alignment. Alignment is the spirit of unity and synchronization of energy within the team to achieve a common goal. You can observe synchronized movements of birds flying in formation in the sky or a group of fish in the ocean or a military on a parade. These are the signs of alignment in the physical sense. In the psychological sense, alignment is about being on the same page, like a choreographed performance. Teams are aligned to the common goals and values. Where there is alignment, there is agreement and commitment. Politics is ignored and impact and outcome is emphasized. The opposite of alignment is chaos and dysfunction within a team. Misunderstandings are common when people from different backgrounds, people with different ideas and viewpoints work together. But leaders set up to resolve differences and conflicts to get everyone on the same page. Leaders listen observe and fill the communication gap. They bridge the gaps between people and leaders align people with their vision. A vision is a primary factor for alignment. A when articulated vision and purpose is very important for alignment. Often vision needs to be over communicated to achieve alignment until there is a commitment from everyone in the team to achieve that vision together. Leaders need to reassert the fundamentals. The fundamentals are reiterated so that no one will abandon the basics that got them successful in the first place. Value system is reinforced on every step of the way, including the respect towards others, respect towards founders of the organization. Consider alignment to be similar to having your car's wheels adjusted so that everything pushes in the same direction. Each action you take must explicitly consider whether you will help you get to 
into alignment or push you out of alignment. A leader's job is to ensure that everyone of the team is on the same page and drawing on the same direction. When there is a lack of alignment, there is no collective violence. There will be chaos, confusion, differences and conflicts. Leaders must watch out for these symptoms and resolve differences and internal conflicts within the team. Whenever there is a conflict among the team members, the leader must bring them together and force them to work it out one on one. There is no gunny sacking or no hidden agenda here. Everyone is encouraged to be straightforward and honest about their feelings and frustrations. The leader's job is to value human emotions and direct them in the right direction so that the team can achieve amazing things together and victory is shared by everyone. The third strong pillar of a high performance team is individual contribution. Individual contribution. Often people say there is no I in a team. But the truth of the matter is that you need different individuals to make the team. Each individual matters. One weak link can work the team. Everybody matters to a team. Phil Jackson said it perfectly. The strength of the team is each individual member. The strength of each member is the team. Each person is unique and talented within the team. They bring in this unique individual value to the team. Groups become great only when everyone in them, leaders and members alike, is free to do what he or she loves to do in their absolute best. Without individual contribution, there is no deep contribution. The best thing a leader can do, therefore, is to, yeah. for the group is to allow that members, allow their members to discover their strength and work complementarily with the rest of the team. Teamwork makes dreams work. The most effective teamwork happens when individual team members complement each other, where every strength is made effective and each weakness is made for relevant in order to achieve a common goal. A great team begins to work together when individuals integrate their interests and put aside their differences to be individually and collectively obsessed with what is good and right for the company. To make this a natural process, leaders play the role of a team coach to make this happen. The job of a leader is to give them the environment and opportunity to bring out the strength of each other. The best teams focus on bringing out the strengths in each person. As Drucker once said, the purpose of an organization is to maximize the strengths and to make weaknesses irrelevant. Sometimes we hear Managers say, if only I had the right people. And people telling, if only they had the right manager. The real mismatch happens when you don't see and acknowledge each other's strength. Right people should be doing the right job. So the first critical task in team building is selection. Having the right people hired in the team. The second task is putting them in the right place. Selective player assignments is essential here. The best teams implement selective player assignments. They assign players to positions based on their potential contribution to overall team performance. They rotate a player in, in, into another position if he or she is not doing well. So you have to get the right people doing the right job. The rule in management says a weakness is often a strength inappropriately applied. Therefore, it is the job of a leader to find the missing pieces of the jigsaw and complete the team. The job of the leader and the team is to elicit the extraordinary performance from ordinary people because, generally speaking, that's all you have got to work with. According to Jean R. Katzenbach and Douglas K. Smith, in their book, The Discipline of Teams, they say, a team is a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, a set of performance goals and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable.
As a team leader, you need to know each team member's strengths and weaknesses. You should also know how we can be complemented with another. There should be a common purpose known to everyone. There should be a certain performance goals in place. And there should be mutual accountability to top it off. And most importantly, a team leader must know how to maximize the strength of the team. But the irony of teamwork is that when people work together, individual performances begin to decrease. The enemy of individual contribution is called social lawfare. First, let's figure out what is social lawfare to understand it, social lawfare. Maximilian Ringelmann, a French engineer, studied the performance of horses in 1930. He concluded that the power of two animals pulling a coach did not equal twice the power of a single horse. Surprised by his results, he extended his research to humans. He had several men pull a rope and measured the force applied by each individual. On average, if two people were pulling together, each invested 93% of his individual strength. When three people pulled together, it was 85%. And when eight people, it was just 49%. Science calls this the social bluffing effect. It occurs when individual performance is not directly visible. It blends into the group effort. It occurs among rowers, but not really racist, because here individual contributions are evident. Social loafing is rational behavior. Why invest all the energy when half into, especially when this little shortcut goes unnoticed? Quite simply, social loafing is a form of cheating of which we are all guilty, even when it takes place unconsciously, just as it does with horses. Social loafing does not occur solely in physical performance alone. In meetings, for example, the larger the team, the weaker our individual participation. And as the number goes up in teams, the 80-20 rules begin to play out. Precisely, 80% of results come from 20% of the people, and so on. However, once a certain number of people are involved, our performance begins to plateau. It makes no difference whether the group consists of 20 people or 100 people. Maximum inertia is often achieved. The implications of social offing is intriguing. We tend to hold back in groups, not only in terms of participation, but also in terms of accountability. Nobody wants to be blamed for the group's mistakes or poor decisions. Finally, people behave differently in groups. But when they are alone, the behavior is different. That's why it is also called the group behavior. So how do we tackle this problem? Individual performance can be made as visible as possible to mitigate this disadvantage of groups. The solution is simple. When each member's work is visible to the group and acknowledged, there will be less chances of social laughing. As leaders, don't give your team members an opportunity for social laughing. Let each effort of each person count. When things are countable, you make others accountable. Let there be many, many talents at play in synchronicity. Let your team members play just not what they are told to do, but the best they can. Let them bring out their talent and strengths to work. Let people shine. Let them not just do what they are told to do. Let them also bring in the best that they are capable of doing. Another key ingredient in individual contribution is the perspective power that each team member can contribute. Diversity of ideas and viewpoints can fuel better conversations, ideas, and innovations. A strong leader who understands this power of perspectives, the power of the group dynamics, welcomes diversity and works to create and sustain it. He or she makes sure that the diverse experience and points of views are represented in order to develop better insight. 
better diagnosis of those problems and better solutions and action plans. Different people within the same organization can bring about different experiences, assumptions, values, beliefs, and habits to work. This diversity is very important because innovation and learning are the product of differences. Remember, when everyone thinks alike, nobody is actually thinking. The fourth strong pillar for team work is collaboration. Collaboration. Collaboration serves as a crucial element in the functioning of any successful living organism or system. It's fascinating to take a stroll through the old growth forest and marvel at the diversity of trees that flourish there. The Douglas fir, white pine, aspen, red maple, and all court they are standing tall and majestic, each seemingly vying for their own share of sunlight and space. But is that truly the case there? Recent studies reveal that beneath the Earth's surface, these trees are in merely competing with one another, but rather they are collaborating in a remarkable way in partnership with fungi. Diverse tree species are connected to underground mycorrhizae networks, where they share vital resources such as carbon, water, phosphorus, and nitrogen. This symbiotic relationship helps them to maximize the growth of the forest as a whole. This incredible discovery sheds light on the perplexing phenomenon observed in our forest. If we clear and replant forest with a single species like Douglas fir, we anticipate that there will be no competition for some light and spaces from another variety. However, research indicates that these single species forests do not thrive as well as forests with a variety of trees. The reason is that cooperation, not competition, amongst diverse species fosters sustainable growth. In organizational life, the same principle applies. A group of high performing individuals can only reach the pinnacle of success when they complement, collaborate, and connect with one another. Just like the old growth forest, they must function as a team, not merely as separate entities working side by side. The meek and unassuming fungus under the surface of our forest teaches us critical lessons about collaboration and teamwork. And if we take heed, the results can be transformative. Great teams collaborate within. They, they don't compete, they collaborate. Whether you're working on a project or trying to achieve a shared goal, effective collaboration can help you achieve your objectives more efficiently with better results. When teams members collaborate, they can leverage each other's strengths, skills, and expertise to produce better results than any individual could achieve on their own. Collaboration also fosters a sense of shared responsibility and accountability, which helps to build trust and strengthen the team's support. Collaboration fosters a culture of creativity and innovation. When team members work together, they can brainstorm and generate ideas that may not even possible if they were to work alone. Collaborative teams often come up with new and innovative solutions that can drive the team's success. Collaboration can increase the team's efficiency and productivity by reducing the duplication of efforts or avoiding errors and streamlining processes. When team members work together, they can identify areas of overlap, eliminate unnecessary steps, and optimize workforce to achieve better results with less effort. Collaboration provides opportunities for team members to learn from each other, share knowledge and expertise, and grow together. Collaborative teams often have a culture of continuous improvement, where team members are encouraged to learn new skills, improve processes, and try new approaches to problem solving. Sometimes, people misunderstand collaboration 
for cooperation. There's a huge difference between cooperation and collaboration. You can cooperate with someone without adding value. Just being a silent spectator can be a sign of cooperation. But when you collaborate, you are actively contributing and adding value to the team. To collaborate, you need to know your roles and responsibilities and what value are you bringing to the team. You should be clear about the goals of the team and your role in achieving them. Additionally, you should be communicating with your team members about what you need from them to perform your roles effectively. Effective communication is essential for successful collaboration. You should be clear and concise when communicating with your team members, ensuring that everyone understands their goals, expectations, and deadlines. It's also important to listen actively to others' perspectives and feedbacks and to provide your own constructive input to the team. Feedback is an essential component of effective collaboration. So be open to receiving feedback from your team members and use it to improve your work. Stay flexible. Collaboration requires a degree of flexibility. Be willing to adjust to the approach to work with others and find solutions that benefit the team as a whole. Be open to compromises and be willing to make adjustments to your work style or deadlines to accommodate your team's needs. And most importantly, use technology to your advantage. Nowadays, most teams collaborate remotely. Therefore, in today's digital age, technology plays a significant role in collaboration. So make use of all that communication and collaborative tools such as email or instant messaging and video conferencing. This will allow you to stay connected with your team members, regardless of their location. Effective collaboration can be challenging, but it's a skill that can be developed with practice. Remember that effective collaboration requires efforts from everyone on the team, so be patient, be flexible, and be supportive of your colleagues. With the right attitude and approach, your team can achieve great results through collaboration. So the job of a leader is to make sure that there is collaboration taking place within the team. There is no social laughing. Everyone is contributing and outcome is generated as a shared responsibility rather than burdening few individuals in the team. Now we know the four big pillars of teamwork. Trust, alignment, individual contribution, and collaboration. Day teamwork is built on the foundation of strong pillars that support the team's success. These pillars provide the teams with structure, stability, and direction, helping them to achieve their goals and deliver high-quality results. By focusing on these pillars and working together to strengthen them, teams can achieve their goals, deliver high-quality results, and build strong working relationships. So as leadership, I invite you to focus on building a high-performance team. Build these strong four pillars and take your team's performance to the next level.